Last week, we sat down with Weed Star Mary Louise Parker and Okello Kello Sam, the founder of the charity Hope North. And Hope North was founded by Okello, and the charity's mission is to educate and heal the young victims of Uganda's civil war. Parker is one of several celebrity spokespeople who have joined forces with the organization. Take a look. Hope North is bringing peace to Africa. One student at a time. One student at a time. Up North is a very good school, but uh, there are a number of challenges. If we all had a challenge and stopped, then what would happen? I'm not going to stop. I want to be an accountant. A doctor. An engineer. A prime minister. Visit hopenorth.org. Do something. Let's do something. Wow, it's nice to see that PSA to help bring awareness to people who may not know anything about this organization. It's true. And Akello, your story is a remarkable one. You were walking to school with a group of your classmates and you were kidnapped and enlisted in a rebel army. Can you quickly tell us what happened and how did you survive such a harrowing event? Well, um, the experiences are very detailed. Some of them are very challenging to remember, but, uh, you know, uh, that is just a brief summary of my life, mm -hmm. of my youthful life. That, you know, you go through the experiences that all, you know, child soldiers go through. And some of them are very challenging. Very challenging. Now, yeah. you were only 16 when you were kidnapped. Yes. And you were in captivity for nearly two years. Yeah. You managed to escape, so your story has a happy ending. And you went from child soldier to being a college student. How did that happen? And did you know that you would be able to survive such a tragic event? Is uh, is my my hope. I, I always believe in challenging obstacles. Mm. So when you get an obstacle, that should never be the end of uh, of of the road for for you. And so because I kept on challenging different obstacles, and one of them was to make sure I escape from captivity. I never wanted to be a soldier. I was captured. It took long. It took two years. I did escape. I wanted to be educated, mm. and I made sure I went to, to school. And I, I could not go to school by my, you know, the support of my parents because we were completely separated. Yes. So I used my performing arts to, so I joined a, 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 a dance company, and because of my performances, I would be paid, and then I would use that money to pay for my education. And that's, so that's, that's how I, I got educated. Well, I think one of the great things about your story is after you got educated, you now are working hard to help others get educated. And you've created a foundation, Hope North, which helps other former child soldiers go to school, get educated, and turn their lives around. Why did you decide to create it, and then why was it so important to you? Well, there are two reasons. One was in honor of my younger brother, because mm -hmm. while I escaped, my 10 years later, my younger brother was abducted. <gasps> And unfortunately for him, he was killed, okay? So that was one of the reasons that I started it so that children like him could be saved. The second reason is, is that just like, like as a child who missed an important part of his childhood, I think every child should be given the opportunity to be a child and to be protected and to be able to achieve their aspirations in life and to be able to achieve their gifts. And education is such a powerful tool Absolutely. To, uh, to, you know, enlighten a person and um, empower them to achieve what they want to achieve in life. Well, your organization has attracted a number of people, a number of important, well-known people, including the lovely Mary Louise Parker. Mary Louise Parker, <laughs> I love saying your whole name. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it important for you to become involved with this charity? And how did the two of you meet? You're incredibly close, clearly, now. Yeah. but. How many years have you known each other? Take us back to your initial meeting. I, I don't even remember how long it's been, but I just, I was, Okello is so compelling, and part of what's so compelling about him is, you know, despite everything he's been through and his story, he's so hopeful, yeah. mm -hmm. and he's so um, resourceful and wants to create different circumstances for other people. And it's, that's really infectious. And I, I just think it's impossible not to be inspired by that and want to help, you know. I, I just find him 
you know, and now I just feel like he's one of my best friends. So. Your best well, friends. But, but just the, the other thing that I want to say is <coughs> that it's not just about my, my story. I think mm. Mary is, is such a person with so much compassion mm -hmm. and a lot of compassion for children. And I think because of that, she she's really supporting our work. Right. I think so, she's, she's a mm -hmm. person with such a yeah. big heart. <laughs> well, it's good to have somebody with a big heart on yeah. your team, but you know, most celebrities, they involved with things that affect them personally, like illnesses or things that they've overcome. But how does this story speak to your heart and why did you choose Hope North as the cause that you decided to be a cheerleader for? Well, I think it's really easy to sort of read headlines or hear mm -hmm. sound bites and feel a sense of separation or a disconnect of things that are, you know, the atrocities that are happening really far away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to me to never forget that how lucky I am that I get to walk down the street, that I get my children can come home from school and, mm -hmm. you know, that there are things that go on in the rest of the world that have no relation to my reality whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And it's still the world and, and I really don't want to forget that. And, and if I can help, you know, I want to. Well, your world is a very glamorous one. Do the people not like my personal world? Not your personal world, <laughs> but your life on camera. Right. Do they have any idea at Hope North who exactly you are? I don't think so. I mean, I think they just know that I'm this. They're not watching lady. weeds there. <laughs> right. I, think, I don't know. Do they? No. Yeah, they we have shown them help. a few things, but the most important thing is that they know that someone actually really, truly cares for them. Mm -hmm. Someone who checks on them on a regular basis. It's not just about supporting, but it's about checking on them and trying to know how they're doing, what is going on in their lives on a daily basis. And I think like, like every child, that's the first thing they want to know, they love, mm -hmm. is there someone who cares mm. for me. Well, just sitting here and off stage before we even started, I can see the relationship that you all have with each other and, you know, the, the kind of care that you have put into this organization. I know some people may think that celebrities only get involved for publicity stunts and various mm -hmm. charities, but it's clear that you've joined this for a bigger purpose. Well, I, I have some resources mm -hmm. to, you know, I'm not Madonna, so I, I can't, <laughs> I, I wish I had her magic wand, you know, mm -hmm. and she works very hard and does a lot of of good for the world you know my resources are smaller but um, I, I want to help it's just I am moved by the story and I don't see how you could not be moved by it and horrified by it and want to help and now the school is based in Kitwanga is that correct yes it's based in Kitwanga in uh, Kiriandongo district okay in northern Uganda and why there why did you choose to have the school there um, there, there are two reasons. One is that it has an historical uh, reason that that was a route that the Luo people used to move from Sudan down to, to, to northern Tanzania. Okay. But the most important reason is that the war was in the north, north of the Nile. Mm. Now, as soon as you cross the Nile, it was safe. And so we decided to, to, to put the school there because then the children were safe from the rebellion because mm. you, you don't cross the Nile. Crocodiles. The, the crocodiles, yes. <laughs> wow. That's what we tell my son. <laughs> well, how do you, put this in perspective for us. Like, how many children are affected by this issue and, you know, how many have you saved thus far? Hope North has uh, supported over 3,000 children. Wow. Right now, as we talk, we have, uh, we are supporting 285. Mm. Fantastic. And, I mean, this war went on for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So y y you imagine how many kids have been affected. Right. And at the, at the moment at Hope North, we have children who, whose parents were children who were abducted. <sighs> and because they were in the rebellion, they got children from there. And because of the war, they died. So the children found their way to Hope North. Mm. It's so tragic. Mary Louise, have you visited Hope North? Have you been to Kitwanga? I'm going, we're going to go. I want to make a big trip out of it because uh, my daughter is adopted from Ethiopia. Mm. So I want to be able to spend time there as well when we go to, um, to Africa. So I want to be able to spend sufficient time mm -hmm. in both places, which is difficult to coordinate with my children's schedules. But we're looking at either next spring or um, the summer. Do you have like a checklist of things you want to do or partake in once you're there? I want to build a, um, a prayer shrine. I just had this idea wow. that it would be great to have a, a place where they could go and, you know, pray or meditate or mm -hmm. if they just wanted to be quiet and 
um, I know that's really powerful for my kids, mm -hmm. and I thought it would be a, a great thing. So um, my neighbor actually is really interested <laughs> in helping. He's a contractor, and he knows how to build things because I wow. don't. Um, <laughs> and he's, he it wants to a, come. It, it and takes he, a village. You know, I'll yeah. talk to it's anybody about it. You know, anybody who wants to come. And Hunter mm -hmm. Parrish is on my show. He wants to come as yeah. well. So we're going to try well, to build a place for them. Well, I think that's an exciting thing that you say it takes a village, and you all are you know, basically giving everyone out there an opportunity to help with the scholarship circle, where you're actually explaining this a little bit more on how people can partake in the scholarship circle. Well, it makes it in a way more personal and more mm -hmm. specific, so you can go to the website and they will give you a password to access um, profiles of the students. So you can browse the profiles uh, if you want and see if you connect to to one student in particular and you can choose to sponsor them. So it's a way that people can you know, some people need it to be a little bit more tangible right. and a little bit, feel a little bit more real, yeah, you know, as opposed to just donation. sending out, you know, a donation. They feel like they don't know quite where it's going. So mm -hmm. in some ways, that's, for some people, it's a really effective way to, um, to donate. And how much will it cost to sponsor a child? I think it depends on for how long okay. you're going to sponsor them and, I mean, to what extent okay. you want to. But I think there are, you know, nominal ways to give. And then there are more, obviously, more extensive ways to give. But it, it surprisingly, it doesn't take that much to help enormously. Mm -hmm. So people should know that, not be daunted by signing on, thinking, oh, it's going to run into a lot of money. It doesn't take a lot to help to do so much. Mm. It's good to hear. We're definitely glad you guys are giving back. And we can't leave without two things, you know, that's been in the news, all in the headlines, and how there is a real-life weeds mom I, I just heard living this in morning, Westchester. Literally this morning, <laughs> I heard for the first time. Yeah, she was but. basically growing $3 million worth of weed, and this is a soccer wow. mom from Westchester. You know, given Where that you're on the, the show. <laughs> I know, right, exactly. Given that you're on the show, Weeds, what is your thought on this whole crazy well, story? You'd be amazed how many times women have approached me and said, you know, that was me. <laughs> and one time, this woman came up to me and said, that's my story. And her daughter was standing next to her. She was about 17 years old. And she went, it's true. Oh, and no. Like, oh, my God. That's funny. So I think it's maybe a little bit more common. It's not really down to just this woman in Connecticut. But oh, Well, you're fantastic oh, okay. in that role. And Thanks. you're fantastic yes. in this role. Thanks. And, Okello, I understand that you play a lovely instrument. You'll help me pronounce the name. And I then you'll... Move. Adungo. Adungo, yes. Adungo. Uh, yes. And you'll play us out with songs? Sure. Thank you so much for being here. And Okello, what is this song about? It's a song about my mother that I, I, I wrote for my mother when uh, I was bringing her from the north to the south and she was crying. So I, I told her, you know, it's okay to cry, but when we do good things, the grieving will be less. And is it true you guys use a lot of music and arts to help with therapy at the school? Yeah, music and dance and the arts gives the, everybody the opportunity to, to be happy and to express themselves. And happiness is one of those things that can heal you what, no matter what you have gone through. Once you have joy, you have happiness, then you're okay. Thank you for bringing joy to all the children there and to us today. <laughs> Thank you for thank sharing you so that and your story with us. Thank you, and thank you both for being here, and good luck with all, and please let us know how we can help in any way. Thank you so much. Thank you for featuring him. Oh, and you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.